Amen and amen. So great to see all of you at the celebration of the new moon. Today we'll be looking at the new moon of the month of Av. Now you remember Abba is daddy, Av is father. So this is referring, this month belongs to dad. This is incredible when you think about this. But let's start with Genesis 1 and 14. Here God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And then he says, let them be number one for signs and for seasons, days, and years. The new moon or the start of every biblical month is the most important date on the biblical calendar. Because without having your starting point, you wouldn't know when any of the biblical holidays were to begin. Uh, the new moon of the month is called Rosh Chodesh or the sanctifying of the new moon. And then this notifies us which days are going to be holier than any other day during that particular month. Now, we also know in Genesis that God gave us the tree of life. And in the tree of life there, on the tree of life, there were all these different fruits. It's incredible. Listen to Genesis 2, 9. It says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if we jump from the beginning to the end in the book of Revelation, look at chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, he showed me a river of a water of life. Remember in Genesis, there were four rivers proceeding from the garden. Well, here we see a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street, it says, on one side of the river, on that was the tree of life. And look at this. It says it bore 12 different kinds of fruits and it yielded its fruit every month. Now, this is in Revelation. So we see in these end days, the tree of life is going to be revealed again. And, all it, uh, and on it will be these uh, 12 kinds of fruit every month. Well, guess what? The month is not going to be January, February, March, or April. These are going to be the biblical months. And how about when we think about it, when we have the new heaven and the new earth? Well, what about right before it? Just before the new heaven and the new earth, let's look at what's going to happen when Yeshua is here during the millennial reign. Ezekiel 46.1, Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court, that looks toward the east will be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath day it'll be open, and in the day of the new moon it will be open. Can you believe it? During the 1,000 year reign of the Messiah, we're going to keep the Sabbath, we're going to keep the new moon, and that's when the gates are going to be open, so we might as well get in practice today. But how about when the new heavens and the new earth comes. What's going to happen then during eternity or what is known as the Olam Haba? Get a load of this in Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. It says, as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So Israel or David shall your seed and your name remain. And it'll happen from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. Wow. Even after the thousand year millennial reign with the new heaven, the new earth, the heavenly Jerusalem's come down. Guess what? We're still going to be keeping the new moon for eternity. Why would we not want to start now and get in practice to understand what's coming? Same thing with the Sabbath. Now, let's look at Psalms 104, 19 through 21. God right here, he made the moon, he says, to mark the seasons and the sun knows his going down. The psalmist says, God, you make darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest, they're creeping forth. The young lions are roaring after their prey and they seek their meat from God. Wow, this is so important to understand the purpose of the moon. Listen to Psalm 81, 3 and 4. It says, blow the horn at the new moon 
and at the full moon for our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel and ordinance of the God of Jacob. They're supposed to blow the shofar on the new moon, the first of every month, but also on the 15th of like Passover, like the feast of Sukkot. So we're going to take a moment and we're going to do what the Bible says and blow the shofar. believe I did it. <laughs> so here we go. That what we need to understand when it comes to blowing that shofar at the new moon, not only do we need to know the purpose of the moon, but why do we blow the shofar in the new moon? It all has to do with God's covenant with King David. So every time you see the moon, you think, wow, God's in covenant with the Jewish people. Okay, David was a Jew. He was from the tribe of Judah. Now, listen to this. This is Psalm 89, 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, I've anointed him with whom my hand will be established. My arm also will strengthen him. And then listen to verse 23 and 24 of Psalm 89. I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him and smite them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. And then in verse 28 and 29, God says forever, which is how long? Forever. I will keep my I will keep for him my mercy and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. Wow. Look at verses 33 through 37. It goes on to say, nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips once I've sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed will endure forever. His throne is the sun before me. It will be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. The moon is God's faithful witness in the sky. David was from the tribe of Judah. He is Jewish. His seed is Jewish. God is saying he will never break his covenant with the Jewish people as long as the heavens remain. And we studied uh, in this last week's Torah portion of Matot and Masai how we have to keep any oath, any vow, the words that come out of our mouth. And we know God does not lie. He made this oath and covenant to David. So the Jewish people will be here forever. You better get used to it. Okay. Look at Jeremiah 33, 25 and 26. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I've not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of David or Jacob and David, my servant. So guess what? It doesn't matter what the Jewish people have done. God will never replace them. OK, uh, as long as the heaven and earth is here. Well, guess what? God's the one who appointed them. So that means he's never going to cast off the Jewish people. Now, in Exodus 12, 2, God tells Moses concerning the first of Nisan, the first month, that this month will be the beginning of months and it'll be the first month of the year to you. So he was speaking to Israel. So only Israel uh, had the opportunity to join God in sanctifying the new moon. And when it comes to sanctification, who makes us holy to God? Do we make ourselves holy to God or does God make us holy? God makes us holy. Our job is to maintain that holiness. Look at uh, Leviticus 27 through 8. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Okay? And uh, in Leviticus 20, verse 26, God says, You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and I'm the one who separated you from all the nations, that you should be mine. And then we see where to maintain that holiness in Leviticus 18.30, where it says, Therefore shall you keep my charge that you do not do any of these abominable customs which were done before you, and don't defile yourselves. I am the Lord your God. With that said, let's stand and let's say together uh, the prayer for the sanctification of the new moon. Together. May it be thy will, Lord our God, 
and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen. Uh, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's host with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles, and they never miss their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews the moons. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Amen. Uh, you can be seated for just a few more minutes. I'm going to teach you about the tribe that is associated with the month of Av. Okay, guess what? Uh, let me show you this PowerPoint here. Uh, here is the layout of Moses' tabernacle and where everybody was. The east had to do with the spring feast. Uh, the south had to do with the uh, summertime, I should say. Uh, the west had to do with the fall season and the north with winter. Okay, and the season of spring is on the east. Well, this is, we're about to enter the fifth month. And so the first month began with Judah in Nisan, and then it went to Issachar and Zebulun. And then we just did Tammuz, which has to do with Reuben. And now we move to Av, which is associated with Simeon. Now, one of the thing is uh, Simeon the, comes the word Shema, Shimon. And so we see this month, why last month was all about vision. This month is all about hearing. But it's actually more than just hearing, it's listening. How many of you know there's a difference between hearing and listening? Okay. I heard you, I heard you. Yeah, but you weren't listening. Okay. So we need to understand this is also about really listening. Listen to Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. Uh, and before I go there, again, Av has to do with father. And guess what? This is a month where they refuse to hear. And so here, this month is all about hearing, but more it's about a refusal to hear what Father is saying. And so we find in Isaiah 11, 1 through 3, the vision of Isaiah, which he saw concerning Judah in Jerusalem in the days of the kings of Judah. He says, hear, look at this, hear, O heavens, give Ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Remember, it's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And, and God is calling on two witnesses, the heaven and the earth. And he's asking both of them to hear what the Lord has spoken. And listen to what he says. I've nursed and brought up children and they've rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Wow. Here, this says that God as father, his children rebel against him and they refuse to hear. So look at Psalm 103. This is verse 13 through 18. It says, just as a father has compassion on his children, so has the Lord compassion on those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers we're just dirt. As for man, his days are as grass as a flower of the field. So he flourishes. The wind passes over it and it is gone and the place thereof knows it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to those who keep his covenant and to those who remember his precepts to do them. So God's mercy is not shown to those who know the commandments, but to those who keep the commandments. Now, why is the term father, a name symbolizing mercy given to a month full of tragedy and destruction. Well, the first half is mired in sadness as we go through the dire straits. 
But come the 15th of Av or Tuba Av, there is an explosion of happiness in the middle of this month. Well, let's take a, a look at this. Did you know there's like seven Sabbaths following the 15th of Av that are known as the Sabbaths of comfort? Because while the father spanks and disciplines his kids the first half of the month, the last half of the month he's comforting his kids and letting them know he loves them. Now, what brought about the tragedies that happened in the month of Av? Well, this was, the, was on the 9th of Av that the spies brought the bad report. Also, the temple was destroyed twice on the very same day. It was on the 9th of Av, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple around 586, 87 BC. And then in 70 AD, again, Rome destroys the temple on the very same day. Later in history, in 1290, all the Jews were expelled from England on the 9th of Av. And then all the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492 on the 9th of Av. So a lot of horrible things happened in this month, a lot of grief. But let's look at Numbers 33, 38. What else happened in the month of Av? We find out that Aaron the priest went up into Mount Or at the commandment of the Lord, and he dies there in the 40th year after the children of Israel came out of Egypt in the fifth month on the first day of the month. So here we find on the first of Av is the anniversary of Aaron's death. Okay, now, there was only, did you know there was only tribe, one tribe who was not blessed by Moses? When you go to Deuteronomy 33, right before Moses dies, he blesses all the tribes. There's one tribe, he has no word, he doesn't bless. And it's the tribe of Simeon. As a matter of fact, Simeon also, you will, when you look at the tribal allotment in the land of Israel, Simeon got no land at all, zero, which is why he wasn't blessed. Uh, he was incorporated within the land of Judah, uh, which is also important for those who think the, uh, the 10 lost tribes involved Simeon. Uh, no, it didn't, because Simeon was within the land of Judah, but that's another story. Uh, also, if you remember, it was Simeon. He personally was the one who threw Joseph into the pit. And this is why he was the one who was held hostage by Joseph. Simeon was also one of the sons who slew all the Shechemites. Simeon is the one who loses control of himself. He has no self-control. So this month of Av is the month of not hearing from the Lord, not exercising self-control. So if we're to learn from history, we need to exercise self-control and not be rebellious. Now, listen to Psalm 30, verse 5. It's God, concerning God, it says, His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Well, guess what? Weeping may happen the first half of the month of Ab, but the last half, joy. It's all about joy. Now, listen to Lamentations, chapter 3, 21 through 23. This is a, a horrible time. The temple is being destroyed. Jeremiah is lamenting his dis, its destruction. But listen to what Jeremiah's focus is. He says, this I recall to mind. Therefore, I have hope. Surely the Lord's mercy are not consumed. Surely his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Wow. It's during the time of lamentations that he realizes that God's compassion doesn't fail. As a matter of fact, listen to this. This is crazy. I, I really, this really hit me uh, today as I was looking at this. In John 16, 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Yeshua says, it's expedient for you, I go away. If I don't go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Well, here, the last half of Ab going into Lul is all about the Sabbaths of comfort. And here in John, he's saying, I want to send you the comforter. Well, get a load of this in Genesis chapter 8, verse 3. It talks about how the waters decrease continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, see how important first days of the month are, the tops of the mountains were seen. Okay, now let's wait a minute now. We do, when we say the 10th month in Genesis, this is before God changed the calendar. So Tishri 1 is the first day of the first month in Genesis, okay? Nisan 1 is the first day of the first month 
from Exodus on. So in Genesis, when it says it was the first day of the 10th month, you count from Tishri and you find that the first day of that first, uh, it says until the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the first day of the 10th month was the first of Tammuz. Okay, when you go around the calendar, so we see on the first of Tammuz were the tops of the mountain seen. And then it says, it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark, which he had made, and he sent a raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth, and he sent forth what? A dove, okay? So if you go 40 days from the first of Tammuz, this is going to take you to like the 11th of Av. Oh my goodness, the comforter comes right after the dire straits has ended. This is when the dove, who we know from the New Testament, is the comforter. And so I think it's amazing when you put Genesis on the right calendar, you see that he sends forth the dove on the 11th of off. And you continue reading, he waits another seven days and he sends forth the dove again. So on the 18th of off, he sends forth the dove. And then you see he waits another seven days and sends forth the dove. That's the 25th of off. So the same three weeks the comforter is sent is known as the Sabbath of comforts in the same time frame of the month of off. This is incredible. Now, uh, I think it's interesting that the raven is going to and fro. We don't hear any more about it. But listen to Job 1.7. The Lord says to Satan, from where do you come from? And he said, from going to and fro throughout the earth, the raven, an unclean bird is likened to Satan. The dove is likened to the Holy Spirit who is our comforter. And we see the last half of Av is a time of great joy because that's when we can look for the comforter to be comforting us. Matter of fact, Revelation 18, 2 talks about Babylon, the greatest fallen, has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean, unhateful bird. That's the raven. Okay, and the raven is circling the earth waiting for the corpses to rise, you know, to be washed up on shore. All right. I think it's interesting in Matthew 13, 16, Yeshua, when he was immersed, went up directly from the water. The heavens are open and he, what does he do? He sees the spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And Noah is basically comfort or rest, his very name is comfort or rest. And we find it was in the month of Av when the father comforts that that's what it's all about. It's amazing. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 66, one and two, the Lord said, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Where is the house you built to me? Where is the place of my rest? Because I'm the one who made everything, says the Lord. But guess what? The Lord says, it's to this man I will look to him that is a poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. That's where his play, he want, we want him to rest in us. And I think it's interesting in Genesis 8, uh, 10 and 11, when he sent forth the dove, it says it returned in the evening and there was an olive leaf plucked off. Well, guess what? That olive branch refers to the Messiah. That's who it refers to. And they say that he found the dove was in Israel when he brought back the olive branch, which is why in Isaiah 11 and 1, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And so the olive branch represented the Messiah that brought comfort to Noah and the leaf represents new life after judgment, uh, just like the tree of life after judgment is brought back. So with that said, we'll close this teaching. Uh, I'll say the priestly blessing. And may you, this month, the month of hearing, may you not refuse to hear, but may you hear what the Lord is speaking to you. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ish mareka. Ya'er Adonai panavileka vichuneka. Yisa Adonai panavileka v'yasem laka shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that great name, Ayah, Asher, Ayah. Go and be blessed. Amen.